Hey guys, it's Red Baron 59 here, back with a second YouTube video for the day. And today I've got a couple of interesting things to talk about. I'll be covering Sony's press conference here very shortly. Uh, I believe they go on at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is approximately 40 minutes from now. And I can't say that I could be any more excited than I am because I can't be any more excited than I am because I'm sure that Sony's going to have some major bombs to drop as they always do. And oh my god, my phone's ringing in the middle of the commentary. But I'm going to go ahead and mute that and keep going. I'm just going to let that slide. Um, anyway, what I wanted to talk about that interesting picture you saw in the beginning was something I've been talking about for a long time. So Scuff has been around for a while, and there was some lawsuits, in fact, contending that Scuff violated the copyrights of the companies in question being Microsoft and Sony by making the modifications to the controllers and selling them. However, it was, again, contended that, uh, you know, it wasn't really a violation of their copyrights, and I want to point out that nobody got a kill until just now. But anyway, they won the lawsuit, they got to continue to make the controllers, but what they do have on their side is Scuff has copyrighted the paddles. Now, I think that it's excellent that Microsoft is finally taking some steps to make these controllers and it was an inevitable thing I guess it made a lot of sense for them just to wait till the Xbox one came out because it was so close to that point when they finally began to contend with scuff over this a lot of people may have been under the misunderstanding that scuff and Microsoft or scuff and Call of Duty are related in some way really they're not they're uh, you know affiliated only by the fact that people use those products for those purposes but they're really not financially affiliated in any way Microsoft takes no dividends from Scuff, and Scuff does not have a um, endorsement from Microsoft nor PlayStation for that regard. But they do have their paddles copyrighted, and you'll notice there are paddles on the back end of Microsoft's controller, so I'm sure you'll see it in court. But I think that the Microsoft product looks wonderful, and I'm really hoping that Sony will be announcing a similar product tonight. I've been talking to friends about it for years that, you know, uh, the Scuff is all well and good, but that I really don't see the point because if Sony or Microsoft ever set out to make a top tier gaming controller, they could go balls to the wall just like Astro or any other company make us something really incredible that would actually be worth $200 because honestly I know how to solder and what Scuff does is not that hard nor that expensive. They charge way too much for what they actually do. Um, you know, so in the end I think it's nice to finally see them come out and really give an answer to this, that new D-pad thing they've got worked out. You know, they talked about how they're going to have two separate settings for triggers to make hair triggers with the controller. You're actually going to have three separate analog heights that you can adjust at will, which is far better than Scuff has. Like, you only get one. You get one choice. You can't just pop it out. If you want to get a change, you have to send it back. Scuff takes like a month to get anything back to you. So it's phenomenal to see that Microsoft has finally answered what I thought was a huge hole in the market. And I think that Sony will probably be doing so near soon because they've been, you know, working on things like the Project Morpheus and, uh, you know, other VR technology. It's only natural that they're going to start stepping into broadening their horizons in the production of, uh, you know, top-tier aftermarket gamer gear, which is a lucrative market that, for whatever reason so far, they have allowed other people to compete in. But now, finally, Microsoft and Sony are beginning to make their own products, starting with, you know, like the PlayStation Gold headset, which I'm sure was only the first in what will eventually be a higher-tier line of headsets. You know, and hopefully there will be some sort of... Uh, PS4 version of this Xbox One Elite controller um, and I will be leaving a link in the description below to that video as well uh, and you know you'll be able to check it out and if you like the music there's a guy Stilo D you know you can check him out on SoundCloud he's kind of an up and coming artist who does his own thing and I appreciate it if you guys gave him a little listen to on there if you're into the tunes that we're playing and uh, you know I really don't have too much else to say at the moment other than there was an amazing trailer today for Andromeda, the new Mass Effect game, and I won't lie, I kind of like, uh, almost, you know, <sighs> got a little sexually excited, if you will, at that game, because I was a huge Mass Effect fan, and I have been waiting for that moment for a very long time. Um, there wasn't really much to see in the trailer, though, which is really disappointing, and another person might try to make a 20-minute breakdown video of it, but... I'll be all the way honest, you know, they showed some of the iconic things like the Mako vehicle and things like that. You know, the N7 logo implying that obviously you're still going to be part of the Marines, uh, you know, well, the space fleet, etc. And 
Uh, it'll be interesting to see where the new story is going to go, but there's really not much to imply from that yet. Hopefully they'll have more gameplay here soon. You know, like an actual gameplay trailer. This was mostly a cinematic trailer, and uh, you can check that out as well. I'll be linking it in the description below as well. And if you like, uh, go ahead and like, comment, or subscribe, and check back for more info on the PS uh, on the PS uh, press conference here soon. I'll see you guys next time. It's a Red Baron 59 signing off.